Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Scott Wurzbacher, and today we're going to talk about how the wilderness offers unique opportunity for a fresh start and a new identity. In the beauty of nature, we can be whatever or whomever we want to be without judgment. And one fun way this manifests for hikers is through the trail name. Today's guest understands deeply the human connection that's fostered through a trail name. Carly Ray Bernalt is here with us, and she's the author of a new book called Trail Name Tales, a curation of stories about how the people she met while through hiking the Appalachian Trail. Carly Ray, known on the trail as Hippie, is a professional photographer from Western Massachusetts who set out to through hike the Appalachian Trail as a way of taking on her own healing journey after tragedy. In setting out to heal herself, she has touched and inspired so many others in the process. This is a heartwarming story full of both fun and heart. Carly Ray, welcome to the campfire. Thanks so much for taking interest in this and having oh. me. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. We were just chatting right before I hit the record button. I, I got this book and I'd sit down on the couch to just start perusing it. And the next thing to know, I'm finishing it. I read the whole thing and well, I couldn't put it down. It was so good. Carly Ray, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. You wrote this book called Trail Name Tales. What is it? <laughs> yeah. So in 2022, I threw hiked the Appalachian Trail and I was a bit nervous to sort of walk away from my photography career at home. Um, so I wanted to do something along the trail that kept me connected to photography in some way. Um, I wasn't really planning for this to become a book, uh, but I started an Instagram page. I started taking photos and videos of hikers and I just asked them, what's your trail name and how did you get it? Um, and then it just sort of manifested into a book afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it's about trail names. So when you're long distance hiking, you usually develop a trail name somehow, some way. It comes to you. Um, it acquires usually in a funny way, but it could also be a sentimental story behind it. Um, but yeah, you hike and you sort of become who you are on trail with a new name and identity. I love it. You get to be yeah. whoever you want to be, but mm -hmm. I'm curious though, like with trail names, how does a person get a trail name? Do you, do they get to make their own trail name? Do they have to get it from somebody else? Yeah. A, a lot of hikers and most hikers will say that you have to get it from another hiker. You can't give it yeah. to yourself. Okay. Um, but a lot of people do give it to themselves. I think that, you know, the one hiker, you they can't wait to get you that embarrassing trail name, like immediately, <laughs> like something you're, you did while setting up camp or something you're saying or eating um, or something silly. And like, people can't wait to just give you the most absurd trail name and, a lot of the time people don't like that name or want to accept it. Um, so some people will hike miles and miles. And if they aren't getting a name given to them that they like, they may end up giving themselves a name because sometimes it's, it's rough to like find a name that resonates with you and feels right. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like once you get on the trail, it's like, oh man, I got to hurry up and like find a cool trail name before something embarrassing happens and something exactly. worse comes along. Yeah. I, I had a couple trail names before my official trail name that stuck and I really was not into them at all. So, <laughs> so it's more. okay. It's okay to start over if you don't like your trail name. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Oh man, there's such a story to all of this and I want to hear about all of it. So hippie, that's your trail name. How did you get your trail name? 
Um, so before the trail, I was photographing a vegan festival and event, and they were giving out little sample packs of hippies, which are a vegan cheese puff snack. They're called hippies. And before I left the event, they had all these hippies left over and they were like, you know, take some with you on the trail. So I took a bunch of these hippies sample packs and I put them in all of my packages that I was mailing myself along the trail. So I was just hippies like from Georgia to Maine. I, I love it. And this is, it's, it's hippie is H I P P E A is the way yeah. that it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a fun so little play. Cool meet me and they're like oh another hippie but and that i always have to spell it out <laughs> yeah it's it's your own it's your own version of hippie it's so cool yeah. so um so how so how do you go about like if you don't like your trail name how do you get rid of it you just don't accept it i mean sometimes you can't get rid of it and it will end up sticking whether you like it or not but um i think you just have to keep waiting till you find a name that you like so that you can yeah. Hang on tight to that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think one of the cool things about the idea of a trail name is that it gives a person the ability to kind of like reinvent who they are. And so many people like go to the trail and 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 get outside and try to connect with nature to sort of just disconnect with the busy life. And sometimes people, you know, go out into the wild in order to sort of reinvent themselves. And so the, I, this idea of a trail name, like, is just sort of a fun way to accomplish that. And I'm just curious if there was like a deeper connection for you in like choosing this project in particular. Oh yeah. Well, for one, I haven't found another project of people consistently sharing their trail name yeah. stories, which I thought was interesting because it's, it's the first thing that you it, talk about and interact with, with people on trail. When you're meeting people, you're like, oh, what's your trail name? How'd you get it? Yeah. It's literally like the first thing you say to each other yeah. most of the time. So um, it just came to me and I um, just started working on it and it just flowed and everyone loved it. And, but yeah, the whole like embracing a new identity for me um, was definitely like a deeper meaning. It was getting out there and escaping everything at home for a while and sort of letting go of my past, even for six months while I'm out there just to detach and mm -hmm. become someone else and have a new name. And it was um, just a really like heavy sense of freedom yeah. to just be different, be something different. And even though like sometimes people come to the trail, like with heavy circumstances, like you just talked about, I mean, it's such a lighthearted way to like, show up and be whoever you want to be. And you don't have to like, you don't have to bring any of your past with you. You could just show up and like, just, you know, have fun with this like whole fresh new identity. And it's funny that we're talking this week, like here where I live in North Carolina and Charlotte, it's the first week of school and, you know, kids are going back to school. And sometimes when you go from like, you know, elementary school to middle school or middle school to high school, like, and you're meeting all these new people and you get to sort of reinvent yourself every time. Mm -hmm. And the trail name like kind of helps you do that. I think it's just so cool. Definitely. Yeah, it is definitely like puts that lightheartedness on like heavy things. There's a lot of people out on the trail who are escaping, um, you know, heavy things at home. So it's nice to be able to just introduce yourself as something silly or, or just some sentimental name that you're carrying with you um, as a, a way to just be free from everything. Yeah. So I'd love to talk about just like a couple of your favorite, uh, names that you've come across, um, in your book or even just in your, you know, adventures on the trail, like maybe, uh, what's, what's one of your favorite funny trail names? Um, so I would have to say, uh, F word. Nice. <laughs> one. Um, it's, my, it's literally F word. F word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he hiked in 2018 and, you know, he was saying the F word a lot while he was taking these like steep inclines and, and someone was like, you say the F word a lot. And like that name <laughs> is his name. Um, but a lot of trail names are really silly. Like, um, K 
cowbell because there's a, a trowel hanging off his pack and making noises that sounds like a cowbell. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, again, like it's people can't wait to give you that embarrassing, silly name. So there's a lot of them out there. And then some people will accept that silly name. So, yeah. And I think, I mean, is it fair to say that like probably the overwhelming majority of trail names tend to have kind of a funny, fun spin to them? Yeah. And, and a lot of people are out there like backpacking for the first time ever. So they're like struggling and, and dealing with figuring everything out out there, living in the woods, essentially. So, yeah. And I guess that's another concept because, you know, it, when you're on the trail for, as, especially when you're doing a through hike, I mean, it gets hard out there. Right. So this is like a way to just kind of like naturally create some laughter and some fun in what might otherwise be like some days miserable. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, there were a lot of times where it felt very miserable, um, hiking up a steep mountain and you're like, wow, this, this really sucks. This yeah. is awful. But at the same time, you're like, this is actually really badass. So at the same yeah. time, it's awesome. Well, you know, like if I just pick up the book right here and I just start flipping pages, I mean, everybody's smiling. Everybody looks happy. I mean, I mean it's just such a lighthearted, fun book. Highly recommend that people pick it up just to bring a smile to your face. It's, yeah. you know, as I said, I was able to get through it um, pretty quickly. So it's really fun. How about a sentimental trail name? You mentioned that some people have sentimental names. Yeah, um, I would say what comes to mind is my friend Newfound. So Newfound before the trail, it was years before she decided she was going to hike the AT, but yeah. she was traveling through the Smoky Mountains with her previous partner and she came out to Newfound Gap. And so she's looking at this sign, Newfound Gap, and she's having this moment of like knowing that she would hike the trail someday. She was like, this is so cool. I could come to this gap. I could walk here from Georgia and I can continue walking to Maine right from this spot. Um, and years later, her marriage ended up ending. Mm. And what came to mind for her was newfound gap. And she just decided now's the time I'm going to hike the AT. And she named herself newfound. And it, in, What's cool about the trail names, too, is sometimes they start with one meeting, but eventually, like from Georgia to Georgia to Maine, you eventually like your name could transform and have so many different meanings through those six months. And Newfound became not only that gap that put the idea of the trail in her mind, but it just became her newfound life. Mm -hmm. And she ended up meeting someone on the trail and now they're married and they own wow. a so yeah that's that's one sentiment that's so cool. I, I remember reading that story in the book so yeah. I, I guess i'm curious like we talked about like how a trail name tends to be an easy way to like connect with somebody when you first meet them and you talk about like how did you get that story like but with that sort of lightheartedness and just the fun of it like, do you find that sort of a door into like starting a deeper conversation with people? Yeah, totally. Um, I will say I'm like more of an introverted person, yeah. if, uh, but I also can be very extroverted depending if I'm working usually like doing photography at an event or something yeah. like I become extroverted, but if I didn't start that project, I probably would have avoided a lot of people on the trail. Like I had my friend with me and her and I, we would get to camp and sometimes camp would have a lot of people if we were in the bubble and we would sort of camp away. We didn't really care to be social. Um, but eventually, you know, you're hiking and you're running into the same people over and over. You eventually start to talk to each other. Um, but also like the project just helped me be more social, which was cool because um, I I would just start talking to people and ask them if they wanted to participate in this project. And then I would form relationships with all these people. So it kept me to be more outgoing and make connections. Um, yeah. But yeah, Thanks. definitely a good conversation starter. Totally. It kind of gave you a purpose on the, uh, So, but when you started the trail, like this was not really, was this on your radar kind of like when you started? 
It was, um, but very casually. I wasn't, um, I didn't think that I would make a book. Um, that kind of came way later. But the project grew more than I thought that it was going to. I was just sort of doing it for fun for myself to like stay creative and meet people. And then afterwards, it just sort of blew up and hikers really got into it. And it's pretty popular now. So, yeah. So um, tell us your Instagram uh, name and what you used when you were on the trail to kind of talk about it. Yeah, it's Trail Name Tales. Um, but Originally, I started posting photos of people. Uh -huh. Also, I just used my iPhone because I did not want to carry any extra heavy weight of a camera. So I used my phone and I started to share these photos and stories. And it wasn't really um, blowing up yet. That wasn't until later. But I did also take videos of everybody telling their story. And so like probably, I don't know, more into the northern section of the trail, I started to make reels with these videos. And they just started blowing up like one reel hit 1 million views. And That's then all of a sudden, I had 16,000 followers. And um, so I think the hikers are what kept me going. And I'm still interviewing people still. So I go to trail and do trail magic or go hang out at a hostel or go for a hike on the trail. And I'm currently like still interviewing people or at trail days. Um, so people are super into it. Yeah. It's so fun. And like, when you and I spoke the first time, like you were sharing with me that like, as you started going through the trail after like a couple of months, like people started to recognize you and they knew who you were. Like, what's that like to go from just like this person starting this hike to like all of a sudden becoming known for this project that you're doing? Yeah, it, it was cool. Um, it was cool to kind of see all my hard work paying off um, or people just enjoying it. it kept, that's what kept me going. Um, but yeah, at first, like it wasn't really taking off. I didn't think it would really become of much, um, but it was actually like not until after my hike when I started to share all these videos that it really blew up. And um, like recently I went and hung out at a hostel in Tennessee, like hikers were coming through. And I just said, does anyone want to share their trail name story for this project? And one girl was like, wait, trail name tales? Like you're, <laughs> you're the person behind trail name tales? Oh my God, you're a celebrity. Like I, <laughs> I want to share, let me share my story. And she's like going around like, guys, trail name tales is here. That's so fun. That's so <laughs> that fun. fun. I love it. It's such a cool project. It's just, you know, again, it's, it's light, but it's got such a depth to it. And that's, I think that's, what's so cool about it is that you can bring this lighthearted nature into such a, a deep thing. And, and, you know, I think for you, there's like a story behind all, how all of this even started in the first place. Like, can you share a little bit about your story and how you ended up on the Appalachian trail in the first place? Yeah. So I've always been an avid hiker um, growing up, I, I live near like a local mountain range. Um, they're not very big mountains, but I have always just hiked out here for daily exercise. And, um, so I've just always been into it. And then during COVID, um, my friend and I, who is, uh, someone I work with doing photography, we were doing a lot of wedding photography together. Um, but then when COVID happened, we sort of lost a lot of event work. Um, and we all of a sudden had all of this free weekend time. So her and I just started hiking like 4k mountains. Um, and then eventually we hiked all of the, uh, 4,000 footers, the 48 in the white mountains. Cool. Um, so that like went it that escalated really quickly. Like, so her and I, we had the weekend time. We also were both going through a breakup at the same time. So it was like, we were just like on the same wavelength and we yes. just hiking. And, um, once we finished all the white mountains, it was just kind of like a joke. And, you know, the AT goes through where we were hiking mm -hmm. in the white. So like, naturally we we're like, Oh, let's, let's just hike the AT now. <laughs> um, and we had gotten laid off for like three months during COVID. Um, but then we just decided eventually two years later to 
to leave our full-time teaching jobs and, and go on the trail. And we, we did it. Um, so yeah, I've always been someone that has liked to travel and sort of look for the next trip and adventure. Um, but yeah, a lot of like tragedy and trauma, uh, of course, were another factor in me taking interest in a six month journey to get away. Um, so yeah, a lot of like family issues. Um, my brother has been struggling with opiate addiction for the last 20 years. So that's Mm -hmm. been like, I'm, I'm still, I'm dealing with that currently even like today. So healing is not linear. Um, but then my significant other of over 10 years passed away pretty tragically from alcohol and, and drug use. Um, and then, so while I was sort of planning for this Appalachian trail hike, um, I found this scholarship online And the scholarship was uh, a family who lost their son to an accidental overdose. And he had hiked in 2018. He hiked over 700 miles of the trail and he passed away in 2019. And his family started this um, financial scholarship to support people who might be seeking healing on a through hike. So I found this scholarship on Facebook. I was like overjoyed. It sort of like it just made sense. The stars were aligning. I was like, this is another factor of like, I need to go on the trail. Um, and I applied for it and I got a partial scholarship, uh, which was awesome. And they, they've, they've become huge supporters in, in my journey. And, uh, the scholarship is called one more day on the Appalachian trail. Um, I was one of the first recipients for it and they're doing it every year now. Um, so there's, there's a lot of factors that led me to the trail for yeah. sure. And I really do appreciate you sharing it. I mean, it's a lot of hardship and, and, um, but you know, I think so many people turn to nature and the wilderness and Appalachian trail for healing. Mm-hmm. What is, what is it like specifically for you that like drew you to that for he, for the purpose of healing. What happens to you when you're on the trail? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, being on the trail, you are literally like you're waking up, you're breaking down camp, you are making food, packing your pack, like going to find water to filter. Like it's all these very simple things in survival to do. Um, and then you're walking and you're moving your body and you're exercising and you're releasing stress in that way, sort of. (laughs) Um, but they're like, even my physical body was holding on to a lot of the emotional baggage, um, that I was experiencing for many years. Um, Mm -hmm. even to the point where I had chronic physical pain in one of my shoulders, like for probably five to six years or so, I really struggled with that. Um, so for the first month on trail, I was actually a bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to complete the trail because I was in so much pain, especially after adding a 30 pound pack. On right, my back. Right. I would like, I really felt pain in my neck and this whole chronic pain area. But after about a month of just sucking up and, and being in pain, it went away. And I actually haven't had any pain there since. Um, so just movement is medicine, um, breathing in fresh air every day, again, like totally detaching from everything. You're not at work you're not with family. (laughs) You are literally just in the woods, like heading to your next camp spot and looking for water and (laughs) thinking about what you're going to eat or, you know, it's it's such a cool analogy. I'm just thinking about like everything you just shared in the last couple of minutes. I mean, you know, what, what you've been going through with your family and with your um, significant other, I mean, it sounds really hard and you use the word simple when you described what happens when you get out on the trail. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good like distraction too. like 
even yeah. it's simple you're you're distracted because there are things that you need to navigate and figure out each day and um you know you're just like looking at a map how many miles till the next camp or water source or town and what do i need for the next three days of resupply and um oh like you're in constant nice views and you know noticing things in nature and meeting new people and it's just mm -hmm. all very um you know exciting when you go into town or stay at a hostel you're meeting interesting people who are doing the same thing you're doing it's it's a complete escape from everything so. yeah I, I want for some reason like the word control is coming to me and i'm wondering if like there's like a in that simplicity if there's a feeling like a, a greater feeling of control like yes it's hard to like you know survive every day right but like i can find water i can find food i can walk from today's camp to the camp that i'm going to stay at tonight mm -hmm. like i'm just curious if there's like if that feeling of control like helps with the healing does that make sense feeling of control of yeah like like taking control of your path in life yeah just like i can do this like you yeah. know this, this, I can do this simple, like, this is a simple thing. I just have to wake up, make my food, find water, move to the next place. Like I can do this. Yeah, absolutely. You are choosing to, um, to, to go on this six month thing outside of society, leave your job, um, mm -hmm. kind of do something that a lot of people, uh, aren't willing to figure out to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'm curious, like with the healing specifically, as you kind of reflect on how long did it take you to do the trail? Six months. So, so in that six months, like as you kind of reflect on that, like what were some of the things like about that experience that really contributed to your healing? Um, I would say like the community, the added community to my life now, um, is just another like group of supportive people mm -hmm. in in all of our lives together like connecting with the family of the scholarship like i still talk to them often we see each other at trail days and um so just having that extra like added support um the project the book like it's all uh, positive things that i'm adding into my life and mm -hmm. um it's it's there forever and now i i like know that if i ever need the trail it, it's there um yeah but yeah i think it's i don't know it's it like the sense of freedom it's it's like it's hard to to say again like healing's not linear cuz then after the trail you do get a lot of post trail depression and then you're like what when can i go on my next through hike <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so i want to touch on just like a, just go a little bit deeper cuz what i'm hearing you say like for you the interaction and the relationship building like especially through this book like it it was kind of like the experiences you had with other people that really helped you and mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, what is different about those experiences with people out in nature, out on the trail, as opposed to the people in, you know, regular life, getting in their cars, driving around, going to work? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all out there um, for some reason. I mean, some people are out there just because it's something they always wanted to do. And they're just like, happy go lucky, like nothing yeah. bad has ever happened to them. They're just like, I want to hike the trail. Um, but then you connect with people who might have been escaping um, a, a, an abusive past or grief or loss or, or other kinds of obstacles in their life. And to be able to connect with people going through similar situations as you is obviously helpful. Um, and yeah, I mean, just traveling and nature, it's all just good, good for the soul. <laughs> Do you feel like people are more like willing to share more vulnerable, like out there in that environment than they are in just like, I think daily totally. walking around life? Yeah, totally. Cause it's like, it's another world sort of. And like, again with the whole freedom and having a trail name like you're just sort of you're more relaxed mm -hmm. you're detached from home 
you're you're just in another completely different environment in a in another state far away you're in, yeah. in the woods also you connect with each other on a deeper level because like you're helping each other like even if you're not friends on the trail or you're just passing by or you're camping near one another like if the water source is an extra mile away from camp some people might go and and get you your water for you or you're just sort of helping each other out or oh i i ran out of food here's some food you're sort of you're bonding in a way that is like we're out here away from society bonding helping each other um it's a different different kind of way of life <laughs> i mean it's like a utopia really like why why can't we live like that in regular society yeah totally great. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I'm curious too, like about the book, because I think what's so cool about your story is, you know, entering the trail to do this awesome thing to heal yourself, to help yourself, you know, to give yourself that gift. But in the process, like you gave so many other people a gift, like your energy on the trail and this project that you decided to take on has turned into this like incredibly inspirational story and gift to other people like how did that experience like further contribute to your own growth um yeah totally like everyone that participated in this seems to just be so eager and excited to to share their story and put themselves out there and um yeah everyone kind of they're always sending me like little notes of affirmation and like just thanking me for for putting this all together and to be able to share their story too um i think that that's what's kept me going too is is everyone's enthusiasm towards sharing their story um and yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's an inspiration and i'm not surprised that people want to be a part of it you know, you've created this thing. I'm just not surprised that people want to be a part of this awesome thing that you've created. Mm -hmm. So um, part of how you got to the trail was through this scholarship fund called One More Day on the Appalachian Trail. And this just sounds like such an awesome organization. I feel like, you know, I owe it to the listeners to kind of understand a little bit more about that organization. Do you mind kind of sharing a little bit more about them? Yeah. So, um, again, Nate Loftus, uh, also known as El Chapo on the trail, he hiked in 2018. He hiked over 750 miles into Virginia um, and he got off trail. He passed away from an accidental overdose and his mom and dad and sister and also his trail friends kind of came together and they formed this organization um, and they just want to help people who are struggling and whether that's people who are in substance abuse recovery or they have again like escaped an abusive past or they're grieving or going through loss or any obstacles or ch tough challenges in life that they need to escape and they don't have um, the financial ability to, to do so. Um, so they, they collect donations. Um, anyone can donate through, through their website and each year. Uh, so they started this in 2022. So each year they've been giving um, a full scholarship, which would completely cover all the costs for an entire through hike. And then, uh, some people will get a partial scholarship um, or any anything that they can give uh, or like a gift card to REI, or, um, uh, which is something that I received. Um, so, yeah, if they're they're going to continue um, each year. So the first year it was um, like five people that got some sort of uh, assistance. And then there's, I think, like three or four people the next time. Um, there's a blind woman hiking with a guide dog uh, right now. She's been sort of on and off the trail, but she hopes to become the first blind woman to hike the AT. Wow. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
but yeah, applications are open right now for 2025. Uh, they'll be closed in October, but you can apply on the website now. <laughs> That's amazing. So good timing. Um, and uh, people can go to their website and they can actually see some testimonials from some of the past recipients. There's yeah. a video of you on there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, can you, and you shared with me, what are, who are a couple of the other recipients? What were kind of some of their stories? Um, so the, there's the blind woman, there are people uh, in recovery from addiction. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first uh, recipient. He got a full scholarship. He was, uh, he's in recovery for a while from substance abuse and he went on to hike other trails too, which is awesome. Um, there was someone who lost a friend to suicide and he, he through hiked all the way. He got a partial scholarship. Um, there was a woman who escaped an abusive, uh, family community, um, and she hiked the whole trail as well. Um, there's me who went through the grief and the loss and, and struggling with family members and addiction. Um, but yeah, there's, there's kind of, there's all sorts of variety going yeah. on of, of yeah. who received the scholarship. Yeah. And as you said, so actually applications are currently open so people can go check that out. Who, mm -hmm. Who can apply? Um, anyone can apply if, you know, if you um, are going through anything that is like, you know, pretty tragic and mm -hmm. you need some assistance in an, an escape. Um, you know, again, some people don't have backpacking experience, but they're, they just show interest in, in wanting to do it. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll apply and then you'll, have an interview and then they, they decide sort of after those interviews. It's such a cool uh, concept. I mean, obviously this family went through a lot and they're using that to, to turn it into a good thing. And you're, you know, you're here with us right now as, you mm -hmm. know, evidence of the good that, that they're doing. I think it's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, like for you and your journey, now that you've been through this, this hike, you've written this book, um, especially as it relates to substance abuse, which has been, you know, big in your life. Is there anything that you want to share with listeners that might be going through something like that, whether they're going through the substance abuse themselves or, um, you know, have a family member that is, I'm just curious, like now that you've kind of been through this whole journey, if you have anything you want to share to people that might be listening. Um, well, it's been a long road for me. Yeah. And again, like, everything comes in waves. And, um, I think if you just work at things one day at a time, uh, funny enough, like people in recovery live their life one day at a time is kind of the motto. Yeah. Um, but I also find that true for people struggling, <laughs> maybe struggling with them or, or anything really. It's just kind of one day at a time. And, you know, me being an artist, like my creative outlet has been my savior, my personal savior and the woods and hiking. Um, so all those things kind of came together, the hiking and my creative outlet, um, it sort of just manifested itself, but yeah. I just kept utilizing those things and it sort of led me to here. Yeah. So I think like just I mean, not everyone feels that they have a creative outlet, um, but it's definitely been something that has helped me sort of like that. It's my constant. So yeah. Well, I mean, there's a few things that you've said today that I like to me, it's almost like this, this thread, like when we first talked about being on the trail and being in nature, again, you, you, first thing you used was the word simple, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's simple being, it might not, it's hard, but it's simple, you know, and, you know, recovery one day at a time, like trail name, it's simple, you know, I mean, these are just, you know, simplicity, yeah, simplicity. Yeah, exactly. So I really, I love that. Um, you are an artist. Um, what else have you got going on right now? Do you want to tell us about any other projects that you're working on? Yeah. Uh, well, while we're on the, the whole addiction thing, I 
did start a project years ago called Dear Addict, and it's about people writing letters to an addict in their life and whether that addict is has passed away and you're still like struggling with the aftermath of that or um, your person is in recovery and you're happy for them, you're proud of them, you wanna express your gratitude towards their recovery. Um, so it's, it's just letters to addicts essentially. Um, but actually someone just published a book called Dear Addict, funny enough. Um, her husband wrote this book. He was an addict. Unfortunately, he he passed away, but she still continued to publish his book. Um, and my significant other that passed away actually and her husband have the same name, which is interesting. Uh -huh. We connected uh -huh. online. Uh -huh. um, so I might change the name or I might keep it. I'm not sure. But I definitely I need more people to participate in that project. I would love to publish it someday. Um, but a lot of people don't feel comfortable sharing um, that heaviness in, in their life. But I've made the project to where it can be anonymous. So I'm hoping more people participate now. Um, so that's that's one other project I have going, but I've been working on it for like 10 years. And yeah, it's awesome. I mean, if people want to support you or take part in that, how do they how do they do that? Um, well, they could. My website is carlyrayphoto.com so they can find me through there. Um, I also have an Instagram page for that project called Dear Addict. Um, yeah. But yeah. Carly Ray Photo and Dear Addict. Awesome. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, in... I guess on a broader scope, if people want to get a copy of trail name tales or find out more about trail names and yeah. your photography business, like what's the best way for people to interact with you? Um, so trail name tales is on Instagram. Also the book is available on Amazon. Okay. Um, I do sell the book directly through me as well. Um, that would just be like sending me an email or um, messaging me on Instagram even. Um, I'm hoping to get the book into some outdoor gear stores soon. Um, and also this year I had a booth at Appalachian Trail Days Festival selling the book and I hope to do that again. But um, right now it's conveniently on Amazon. <laughs> So. Nice. So maybe if somebody decides to go hike the Appalachian Trail at some point along the way, maybe they'll bump into you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm still going out there. Um, actually, tomorrow I'm going to go hang out at a hostel in, uh, in New Hampshire and interview people. And I'm also going to run over to the Long Trail in Vermont and snag some interviews over there, too. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I'll hike the PCT or CDT out west and created a West uh, version of trail. I love, it. I love it. That's going to be awesome. Then we'll have to get you back to hear about that one as well. Yeah. So speaking of which, I mean, you know, your story is just getting started. You know, you've had tragedy and it's been painful and you've taken that and you've turned it into something good. And now you're inspiring other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, Carly Ray, at some point, Hollywood is going to pick up on your story. <laughs> And they're going to want to make a movie about you. And I want to know when they do, who's going to be the Hollywood actress that's going to play you in your movie? Oh, that's so funny. Well, um, my celebrity lookalike is Scarlett Johansson. So maybe. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I like that one. That like, worked. Even from the time I was 16 years old, like I have people telling me I look like her for so much of my life. It's, I, it all the time. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. I think that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So Scarlett Johansson, what's the movie going to be called? Oh, um, <laughs> how about survival mode? <laughs> survival mode starring Scarlett Johansson. I mean, We're I'm feeling survival that. mode, right? <laughs> I'm feeling it. I think that's awesome. I love it. Well, I really, really appreciate you spending the time. I think that you bring joy to the Appalachian Trail and to hikers. And I love what you're doing. And I hope you'll just keep going and and uh, and keep cranking out the fun, creative work. And for those listening, I hope you've been inspired today as much as I have. I hope Carly Ray's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or just need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. 
We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. Thanks for listening. Carly Ray, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.